Our story opens on the Imperium mining world of Tyrus in the Kaladad system. Tyrus is a tidally locked world orbiting its red dwarf star, one side constantly facing the sun, scorched to a hot desert, while the other side is in constant darkness, a frozen wasteland. The planet has two very interesting features. First is the twilight zone around the equator, the part that is in the perfect region between the scorching desert and the frozen ice land, allowing it to flourish with life. A large ocean acts as a belt around the world with a couple of large continents and numerous small islands. These are all lush with jungles, with the exception of where the Imperium has set up their operations. However, for all the life that is above the surface, there is even more beneath. Countless varieties of flora and fauna have evolved beneath the frozen and burning sides of the planet. Many of these develop the ability to carve out vast tunnels, turning the inside of a planet into an enormous catacomb full of life that never sees the light of day. This is what drew the Imperium to Tyrus, as these catacombs made for pre-made mining facilities, exposing mineral-rich veins and pockets of precious gases. With all that is interesting going on underground, our story is actually mainly about what is happening on the mostly uninhabited jungle continent of Erethul, for this is where the Sentinels of the Forge Space Marine Chapter train their new recruits. The planet Tyrus has long been a training world for the Sentinels of the Forge. Except in great times of war, there have always been several squads of Space Marine Scouts spread throughout the dangerous jungles on the continent of Erethul. Erethul is perfect for training scouts, as it is mostly covered with dense alien jungles full of dangerous animal life and vegetation. Veteran Sergeant Saul Talux has been training the Sentinel of the Forge initiates for over 200 years, a position he takes most seriously. Ever since losing over half of their chapter in the Trial of Chaos Wars fought over a thousand years ago, the veteran sergeants responsible for training new recruits saw their positions as even more important than ever. They never wanted to feel the same crippling effect of losing so many of their brethren in one huge loss, and saw the continual training of new recruits as a way to ensure the future of their chapter. Saul has even passed up numerous opportunities to join the ranks of the first company, and even at least two offers to join the upper tiers of the chapter command. In truth, this isn't just because of his sworn duties to continually rebuild the Sentinels of the Forge chapter, but because he actually prefers the thick, almost claustrophobic jungles of Tyrus, and the thrill of leading fresh recruits through the trials that would allow them to become full-fledged space marines. However, as of late, something strange has been happening. The creatures of the jungle have begun to act erratically, much different than what Saul has grown accustomed to. Hunting grounds that used to be rich with harsh predators are being emptied. Animalistic territories that have been placed for decades are suddenly being changed, with the larger creatures venturing out and taking up new areas as their own. The flora has been acting unusually as well, growing more lush and even more alien. New species of fungus has been spreading through large areas of the jungle rather rapidly, bringing down enormous trees with their diseases. The balance that nature has had for thousands of years, even with the horrendous amounts of pollution dumped into the atmosphere from the Imperium mining operations, has been upset. Saul has decided to investigate the source of all of this change, sending out many of his squads of scouts into various parts of the jungle to determine if they can find the source of the transformations, whether they be Xenos, Chaos, or otherwise. It seems that the most radical of the changes come from deep within the jungle, which is why Saul has taken charge of some of his own scouts to move in and investigate. Besides, regardless of what it is, it will make a great training exercise to boost the abilities of the Sentinels of the Forge's recruits, and thus strengthen the chapter. Hey everybody, Matthew and Josh here from AnyWarGaming.com and welcome to the introduction of the Tyrus Incident, a new narrative campaign that we are now working on. It's going to be Josh and I doing it. Josh has taken on the role of the Sentinels of the Forge 10th Company on the planet Tyrus as they deal with an incident, which of course you've already seen the story time because that was the first part of this video. So we've led up to kind of building the story and then when we get into game one we'll actually introduce what starts to happen but you may have already got hints of what's involved in this campaign if you've been following us on Facebook or anything else. But anyway, this video, the point of it is to get everything introduced, talk about the terrain, talk about the, the starting army, talk about how we're gonna run this mission. Uh, it's gonna be running more like a traditional narrative campaign. I say traditional, I mean like our earlier ones where I would create a story and GM a player through it. And uh, so I will be doing that. So I'll be taking on the role of all the other people whether the bad guys or neutral guys or other good guys, whatever it happens to be. And Josh is just going to have to try to survive it. So while the story itself is kind of scripted, 
the actual battery ports are not, and which means that individuals can come and go. So any important people, like Veteran Sergeant Saul, or the Sergeant Joshua mm -hmm. Apollyon, who is modeled after Josh, Lee, Lee made a couple custom models for it, which is really cool. Uh, they can die right away, and we're not going to stop that from happening. We're just going to play the game, and we're, we're going to try to make an interesting story gonna, from it. I'm going to try to stop it from happening. But well, <laughs> I, I'm just going to say, if it happens, I'm not going to yeah. like fudge dice rolls to make it not happen. Yeah. So Because we have control over the story, but not individual guys in the individual battle report as well. So we'll kind of have to see where the story goes based on how that happens and everything else like that. And right now we have a special offer going on because the first game is in the Mini Wargaming Vault at the link below. But if you sign up for the Mini Wargaming Vault through the link below in the next seven days, assuming you're watching this when it first comes out, before basically the second set of missions comes out, then you get access to the entire Tyrus campaign even if you cancel your vault membership. Because normally, you sign up for the vault, and then if you cancel it, you no longer have access to anything in the vault. But if you sign up through that link, even if you cancel, before or after your trial, or six months down the road, doesn't matter, you can always have access to the Tyrus campaign. Even if you cancel before the entire campaign has gone out, you'll still get access to the ones that do come out after that. So that's our special offer to try to entice you into trying out the vault. It is the reason that we're able to do all of this, of course, and afford all the terrain and the models for it, and the people, mm -hmm. and the building, and everything else. So you can check that out. If you're already a vault member, well, then you're going to have access to everything anyways. So don't worry about that. So let's take a look at the terrain and the starting armies. I'm going to start by taking a look at the army that's going to be participating in the first game. And then over the course of the campaign, more will be added as some of them die. It is quite possible for some of these to die permanently. The important characters, however, will be the sergeants of each of the squads. They are the ones that will upgrade. Now some of the upgrades that they get can benefit their squad. And so it just works around them. So it's not like everybody all of a sudden gets upgrades, it's just the sergeants. And so we've got a couple special models here. First is Veteran Sergeant Saul. And this is, um, I can't remember exactly, we're gonna have to get Lee to do a behind the scenes to talk about how he made all these models. Cause I remember he had this model, I think he had it from an old Necromunda gang. And then he converted it up to be Veteran Sergeant Saul Talix. So this guy, because he's been here for so long, I've upgraded him several levels already. So he's not gonna start at level one like everybody else. And so his weapon skill is already five, his ballistic skill is already six, he's got two wounds and two attacks and a leadership of nine. And um, he, he it was based slightly off of veteran sergeant uh, Talus, is that his name? Talion, I think. Talion? Yeah, Talion, sorry. And so he's actually not an independent character, he is a scout sergeant, but he's a veteran sergeant, obviously. So he's got all the normal scout stuff like move through cover, scout, and infiltrate. These are all Salamander's chapter tactics, as Sentinels of the Forge are a Salamander's successor chapter. I don't think they'll be making use of that very much, because they're not gonna be, you're not going to be seeing lots of flamers from these guys. And then he's got uh, upgrades, he's got stealth, so his whole squad has stealth. They also have camo cloaks. He's got the Warlord trait Storm of Fire, which allows him in each shooting phase to choose a squad within 12 inches and they get rending for their shooting attacks. He also has an upgraded Infiltrate, where if he infiltrates, his squad can actually subtract six inches from the minimum distance they have to be away from somebody, so that might be useful sometimes. And uh, Target Priority, which is a special skill in this campaign. I'm gonna publish the rules for this. You go to miniwargaming.com slash Tyrus. There'll be a link in the video description. And you can download the rules that I made for this guy as well as how to upgrade guys as well. And target priority is a skill where if he doesn't shoot, everybody else in his squad gets to use his ballistic skill, which in this case is a ballistic skill six, so that makes it nice, although it means that he can't fire. He does have a close combat weapon, a bolt pistol, and a sniper rifle, which I know is not a legal configuration for a scout sergeant, but this is a narrative campaign where we can do whatever the heck we want. And he's in a small squad. Everything's gonna fit in land speeder storms for this mission, so everything's gonna be small squads of five. And so there's three sniper guys and one missile launcher guy. Everybody with camel cloaks. And then we've got Joshua. Another custom model made by Lee to look like Josh, obviously. And he's a close combat fanatic. Still a level one though, so he hasn't upgraded at all. So he really hasn't made a name for himself, but we decided to give him a name anyway. So we'll see if he actually does anything or if he just dies like a sucker in the very first mission. <laughs> or just squeals like a baby and runs away every time. I don't know. Let's, just, well, let's see what personality he develops based on that. And he's in a close combat squad, so we've got a mixture of guys with bolt pistol close combat weapons and shotguns. And they'll be riding inside of a land speeder storm as well. And he's not a veteran sergeant. Oh, sorry, no, he is a veteran sergeant. So that is the only upgrade that he does have. And so he's got the um, plus one attacks and plus one leadership as well. And then we've got a regular squad. No name for the sergeant for this one because he hasn't earned it yet. We'll give him a name if he is interesting. And this is a bolter squad. 
with a heavy bolter with Hellfire rounds. The Hellfire rounds is a 24 inch small blast Poison 2 Plus riding inside of a Landspeeder Storm as well. All three Landspeeders have just heavy bolters as well as their normal um, blinding missile launcher thingy that they have. So this is Josh's starting army for the campaign. And as you saw from the story time, you should have already seen lots of pictures of this jungle. This is the board setup for the very first mission, which is going to be a stampede. As you will find out when you watch that mission, there will be a story time attached to the very beginning of it. So we're not going to put the story time separate. Each mission will have its own little story time, whether it's a couple minutes long or longer, just depending on how much the mission needs. So just talking quickly about this train, I do want to do it behind the scenes. I do intend to do that. But uh, Greenleaf Terrain worked a lot on this. Now, these bigger pieces, it's actually all aquarium terrain. I'm sure some of you might realize that. And a lot of this stuff is. And he, he washed it with a, like a, a brown wash or something. And then he sprayed it with matte varnish as well to get rid of the plastic sheen. This one he, he painted and he even put in, like he added all the foliage and stuff. And he even added a resin little water thing. And he added all the, the leaves and everything. And then he actually built these mushrooms. He cast them so you can actually order them from him. And he'll make some for you as well. And, um, and these ones I think are from, oh, I don't want to get it wrong, I think they're from War Gamma. Uh, but hopefully we can confirm that. And then the boards themselves, Greenleaf Terrain made. And so we've got some gorgeous stuff going on here, like the river and the marshes. So the entire campaign, pretty much, except for maybe a few special missions, will be happening in the jungle. So it's all about this jungle. So you're going to see lots of this type of terrain, with some variations to it as well as we go throughout it all. So the first mission is in the link in the video description below in the Mini Wargaming Vault, along with the special offer to get access to the entire campaign if you're not already a Vault member. Otherwise, just if you are a Vault member, thank you first off. Click the link and go and watch that now. And thanks for watching. Happy Wargaming.